Hey there, Shirtlight here. Now, in passing, I did make remarks about how questionably balanced the launcher strike is in Rango vs F2 Plus for the PS2. Originally, I wanted to wait until I get to do a unit guide for it, but then I was like, nah, scratch that. I think one guy in the comments wanted to know, so here you have it, in a standalone entry. I know, I know, the comment is pretty old, but there is only so much I can do as a three-man team of me, myself, and yours truly. Uh, anyway, let's get to the topic at hand. What makes the launcher strike such a balance breaker? Surprisingly enough, it isn't the missiles, or even the giant agony beam cannon. No, the most egregious feature of this machine is the 120mm machine gun mounted on its shoulder. Now, for reference, the giant green gun you are carrying as your primary weapon deals 175 damage per shot, and about 80 more if you hit something with the charge shot groby. Both of these take some time to either ready up or recharge, not to mention the rather sluggish recovery animation. However, the automatic anti-ship Vulcan, you heard me right, it probably can give spacefaring vessels some trouble, sitting on the right shoulder like a parrot, deals roughly 125 damage, depending on how many shots you manage to hit. Well, here's the catch. This attack, which by the way is done via your special melee input, consists of 10 shots. You need 3 shots to stun, 8 to knock the enemy down, and on top of all that, each of the 10 shots have very good tracking. To add insult to injury, the attack is extremely spammable and can be used to break falls. Oh yeah, and it shares the ammo pool with the head Vulcans, so you're looking at roughly 80 rounds flying your way before the reloading kicks in. Alright, now that we've established how nasty the launcher strikes anti-ship Vulcan is, let's see how you can beat it. The general tips are to keep a high ground and don't approach from angles where it won't take the launcher strike some time to adjust the firing angle. The reason for the latter being that the launcher strike has to stop in place when executing any of its attacks, except for the rather feeble head Vulcans. This weakness can also be somewhat exploited by putting more pressure on the launcher strike, preferably from multiple angles, so that it can't counterattack and dodge at the same time. Obviously, it's harder in the 2v2 scenarios of Gundam vs, but I didn't say that it won't be an uphill battle. I suppose that should cover that aspect of the 4 cost launcher strike in Rango vs F2. It's looking like I'll be pretty busy in the coming weeks due to some off-screen stuff, but I'll try to get some smaller videos done and scheduled in advance to keep you from getting bored. That said, take care, and this is Shirtlight, signing out.